He's going to hand it off up the middle to number seven. He breaks a tackle, shoots to the left. Brought down by Nathan Weekman, run by Mason Brooks. That was Johnny Hernandez hanging onto his... Uh, hanging onto the ankles. Yep. Initial contact was by Weekman. 8.33 left in the first. Lando going a bit of a hurry up. And then a slow it down because the coach is changing okay. the play from the sidelines. All right. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Oh, Not okay. sure what happened. Are Just, we back uh, on? We're back on. So shoot right. us to Texas 0 0 left in the first quarter. That's number seven. Stacked up Mason Brooks. Tackle band by number 12, Nathan, Nathan Weekman. Nathan Weekman, we've been calling his name a lot this year. He's been a force on the defense. All right, break down third down and nine now as we have three spread wide to the right, one to the left, and that's going to be a quarterback keeper design. Big hit right up the middle at the 25-yard line. That is 52. Jack Hood. Big Jack Hood. What a hit. That brings up fourth down, it looks like. Are they bringing in the field goal unit? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think with with this one, you get the points. I agree. Um yeah, he's that's, that's the field goal unit out there. They just placed a block down. So Left-footed kicker. Ball's going to be spotted. Well, the ball's going to be placed down. The snap will be at the 23-yard line. There's a snap. It's down. The kick well, is up. Kick. And looks pretty good. The Had kick is leg. good. So seven minutes remaining. Stop the clock, people. Stop the clock. <laughs> hey, not for nothing, that's a victory on a Lago Vista defense. I wholeheartedly to agree. Be inside your own territory after a disastrous onside kick attempt and to hold them to three points, yeah, that's I a victory. Think, I, I think the defense played very well there. I agree. And big shout-out to uh, Isai E. Arredondo listening in. Thanks for giving us the heads up that our broadcast wasn't working. Yeah, but we're, he just said we're working now. Yeah, we're so. working now. Yes. Are you working now is the question. Absolutely not. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Probably sitting there with his feet up. Uh-huh. Just enjoying life. That's it. And then, and then he just texted us. Yeah. Oh. Hey, give me a shout-out. We just gave I you just a I just gave you the shout-out, and you, uh, now you're texting me and telling me to give you a, a another shout-out? Shout shout-out has been rescinded. Uh, you've, we've given you a shout-out. You've had enough shout-outs tonight. <laughs> you know, speaking of shout-outs, I actually, you know, you know, you know that whole uh, game where you had a phone-a-friend? Well, I had that with a phone-a-friend from East Saeed the other night. Really? Oh, the other morning, actually. Oh, I'm on my way to Watch Dogs. And, yeah, sure enough, East Saeed's call broke down. Had to go save him. Oh. You're welcome, East Saeed. Gave you a little save. He was jogging down Boggy <laughs> Ford, doing the hill. I got him right when he got to the hill, too. So oh, he, good, was, good. he was exhausted. He owes you big time. <laughs> Here's the kickoff. That's going to go deep. That's going to go out of be bounds. Let it go out of bounds. Fielded by Fisher Topo. And he is Doesn't not going to gain much of anything. Could have let that one go out of bounds. You you would think, but if that bounces, if that hits another bounce, it bounces back into the field. Yeah. Then you got a problem. So. I don't have a problem with him taking that one. He, yeah, he did not lose yardage. He gained, you know, he fielded about the 19, got tackled at 19. So Vikings are going to take over first and 10 at the 19. Now he's claiming he didn't hear our shout-out to him. Well, he uh, needs to listen better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May not want to say that one on air. <laughs> Vikings come out. They've got two spread wide to the left, oh, and the, the left side of the line uh, jumps for the Vikings. The so they will go. Side. They'll move back five. It'll be first and 15 now. Buck Pounds in at quarterback. we got Gonzo Hidalgo. He's going to be spread wide to the left side. In a moment. Isaac Roney spread wide to the right. And then we're going to have Cody Jackson... And Lane, Lane Powers. Powers and Sam Hurley in the backfield in their uh, in the three back set as Cody Jackson goes into oh, motion. Good Buck Pounds gives it, uh, pitches it Get to Sam field. Hurley. He gets across the twenty, nearly the twenty-five. Very nice read by Buck there. Good little run. Taken down by number seven, Mason Brooks of Lano. 
That's, a, that's, that's, a, that's an excellent game. Uh, game great on, uh, gain. Uh, first, first, down for sure. first and 15. First and 15. Got a good 10 yards out of it. That's going to bring up second and five, and you got to feel very good about this. You know, with, with this type of offense. Yeah, we could gain five yards in two plays, no problem. Hidalgo comes out wide to the left. Isaac Roney goes wide to the right. Buck pounds under center. There's a snap, and Buck's going to go. Looking He's going to drop back, looking, looking, looking. Ooh, Spins out of one tackle. Get a field He's going to get to 25, the 30. Ooh, he may the go. 40. He leaps a de uh, defender at the 50, and he is taken down at the 45 yard line. Huge gain for Buck Pounds on a busted play where he decided to make some things happen with his feet. Great play. Great play on it with his legs. Uh, taking down by number 13, Ethan Tisdale. Uh, that was actually fantastic. He was dead to rights in the backfield, pulled a spin move, came back to his left, and took off down the side. One more block. He could have broke that. Yeah. So the Vikings have it with 539 left, trailing 3 nothing there at uh, the Lano 44-yard line. Three in the backfield, one spread wide to the right, one to the left, and Buck's going to hand that to Lane Powers. The hammer goes across the 40, the 35. That'll be first. Uh, that'll be second down at eight. Is that his nickname now, the Hammer? I like it. I, just, I like. You I, know I, what? I you just, just you just made it. I yeah, think. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's Lane the Hammer Powers. Yeah. And then we got on the tackle Presley Lynch, number thirty. So that is close to another first down. And brings up second and three again. Lago offense moving. This Shaking. is this is how you want. This is the position you want to be in. Cody Jackson goes into motion. Buck Pounds is going to pitch to Cody Jackson. Oh, Ball's down. out. Ball fumble on the play, Lano's and Lano will recover. 84. That's Quentin Franklin on the recovery. Just a bad pitch. Uh, hit Cody in the hands. I, he might have not been looking. There was a couple of people in the backfield already on him. So probably looking where he was going to run before that pitch got to his hands. A yep. little bit of distraction like that. But that's why we practice it in practice. That's right. Pitch relation, pitch relation, pitch relation. That's where you have to be. And you also don't want to wait too long because when you have excellent coverage by the defense, it just blows the whole play up. At that point, you just hang on to it and tuck your head and just try and make a play. Viking defense stood tall last time as we have three spread wide to the right, one to the left. That's going to be a quarterback keeper. Take it down the backfield. That was number six, Cade. Fly is the quarterback. Nathan Weekman on that tackle in the backfield. Looks like uh, he got back to the line of scrimmage. Brings up second and ten. You know, you ever notice quarterbacks usually have pretty cool names? Yeah, usually. Buck Pounds. Buck Cade yeah. Fly. Cade Fly. That's a good one too. Got a man in motion. Last week had one. Good, uh, had a good one too. Uh, Cade Fly is going to roll uh, to his right. Bass complete, taken at the 50, breaks the, the 40. And a stiff arm. And he He's is still going to by. And uh, that is number 12. Case uh, Kuykendall. Case Kuykendall. He, he is gave in three, for a touchdown. Three stiff arms on that. One behind him and two ahead of him to get in there. <laughs> Put the crowd mic over here. Just to... Uh, Get away from so Lit Will doesn't keep uh, <laughs> speaking into it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go. All right, 407 oh, left. Lano scores. Scores nine nothing. Here's the extra point. The kick is up and it's good. The kick is good. Well, the 407 left. Lago trailing 10-0. That one hurts to come back and have a great drive stalled by a fumble and the ensuing play go 60 yards for yep. the touchdown. Yep. That's a tough one. All right, this is the Viking Sports Network. We'll take a quick break. 10-0, Lionel leading, 4.07 left in the first quarter. Salem Ski Center is a full-service boating lifestyle store. Whether it's selecting and purchasing a new or used boat, maintaining the boat you already have, or enjoying your boat with friends and family, Salem Ski is dedicated to delivering the absolute best boat ownership experience for all of our customers. That's why Salem Ski was voted Boating Industry Magazine's number one boat dealership in North America. Find us at our locations in Austin or in Lakeway or at www.salemski.com. 
At Sail and Ski Center, we make selecting, owning, enjoying, and servicing your boat easy. This is the KMAX Sports Network. <laughs> I don't believe Kuderna is from Lano. It's the Viking Sports Network. 4.07 left in the first half. Lano leading 10-0. Viking offense has done well. One critical turnover, and that turned the uh, that turned the ball game. Fisher Topo is going to field it at the 20. Get he up field. takes it at the 25, and, and he's pushed back. Body by, slammed uh, by, by some, four of them. By, uh, so by a swarm. A swarm. Oh, I like that. Look at you playing yeah. words. With I've been the working on that one all week. <laughs> Uh, That's all I got. All right, so I have to have a critique on this. We need to teach our guys to put your head down and run upfield and stop going back to the middle where the protection is if it's you're running 30 yards to get back to your protection and blockers. If you catch yeah, you they're, know they're kicking it to the sidelines. Run upfield, get at least five, six, seven yards. You're running 30 yards across the field and get nothing. What he's trying to do is kid around that edge, but it's hard. Yeah, well. Buck Pounds hands that off to the middle lane. Powers gets almost to the 30, gain of about three, second and seven. The only problem with that is, like I said, when they kick it hard to the – because we have a middle protect on at that point, and I understand the reasoning behind it, but when you're kicking it to the sideline, you're not yeah, getting back no, to that middle protect because they're already down the field. You need to just tuck your right, head, you come up down the sideline, maybe mi make a guy miss, and you're going to go. But running back to the middle – for nothing is, is just a waste of time. Tuck your head and get four yards out of it. Second and six. We got three in the backfield, one spread wide to the right. Cody Jackson goes into motion. Oh, he lost the ball again. And Lago recovers. Little center to quarterback. Lane Powers on the recovery. Keeping Lago in it. It'll be third down and eight now at the Lago 28-yard line. Towel got thrown off. Maybe the ball was a little wet. Is it drizzling out? It was for a second, right? I mean, Noah Vasquez in. He's going to be at the – at the. you would put him in at tight end on the right side. Isaac Roney spreads out and ride to the right. Cody Jackson goes into motion. Oh. Buck pounds. He flips it to Cody Jackson. Another Same. fumble on the play. Ball goes back to the 15, so Lago's going to have to punt as that drive did not look as impressive as the first one. No. Mason Baker uh, broke that up. Well, the hard part is Lano's getting a lot of pressure, and so Bucks, you know, he's he's not being able to pitch it as well as he would like to. Yeah, um, they're, so they're, they're on him right away, so that's going to disrupt the pitch every time. But it, when it hits you in the hands, you got to catch that ball. Whether it's a receiver, whether it's a running back, you got to catch the ball. Bryce Erickson with the punt. Nice Good low punt. line drive punt. Oh, that's driving him way back. That's going to go to the 40. Yeah, will be down at the Lano 37-yard line. The Lano offense will take over. Lano offense has had two drives. The first drive stalled a bit, had to settle for a field goal as the Viking defense Stood up well. The second drive ended up, it was a short pass across, uh, not a short pass, but a mid-range pass. Great individual effort, though. Yeah. He, he broke three tackles and went in for a long touchdown. So Cade Fly, quarterback for the Lano Yellow Jackets, comes out. He's got three spread wide to his right, one to his left, one in the backfield. Lago no defense. safeties deep for Lago. And Cade Fly is going to roll to his right. Quick pass. Receiver fell down. Incomplete. That field, I, you know what? I can see why they're having problems with that, uh, with that pitch and with the center to quarterback exchange, because that field seems real wet. Number eight, Mason Hines was on that pass defense, and they slid yeah. about three yards. So you don't slide if it's not wet. Three spread wide to the right, one in the backfield, one to the left for Lano. Lago is 3-4 uh, defense, and Cade Fly again rolls to his right. Quick pass to number 88. Great nice tackle. anticipation. Nice tackle by Sam Hurley. Pass was complete to number 88, Joe Pogney. That was a great job by Sam Hurley. Again, need your best tackles out there. And Sam Hurley came up from the safety spot, saw saw that it was going to be yeah, a it was quick great pass. Anticipation. And... 
One we'll split go. second soon, and he could have taken that to the house with a pick six. Third down and five. Three spread wide to the left. That's going to be a handoff up the middle. He's going to get to the – he will That's not be get close. to I don't the think first down it. marker. It'll be the 48-yard line. Arietta on the tackle. Oh, on the tackle. Almost the end of the first quarter. Yeah, we got one minute Quick left quarter. in the first. Yeah, I know that was good. So this is a this is a tough call if you're Lano. I think you got to feel like you want to establish a little dominance in the game. You got to go get, for it at this you, point. You know, and so I think you, you you feel can we gain a yard? Well, they're if, not on the center. They're doing yeah. a shotgun, so they're going to rely on either a short pass, somebody jumping. We've got two spread wide to the left, two spread wide to the right for Cade Fly, quarterback. The I'd, Lano I'd Yellow Jackets, right H-back, comes in. And he's going to punch, pooch it. And that's a well There's that punt. quick kid I was, quick kick and I was telling you about. And it's going to come to rest. Went oh, end zone. boy, that hurt. Now, he the, uh, the ball was coming to rest inside the five-yard line. The Lano players... Went down, slid to try to down it, knocked the ball into the end zone. So the Vikings get a little bit of a break there as they'll take over at the 25-yard line. Or 20. I don't know if we've ever established this. I think I've asked this every week where it is, and I can never it, No, it's the 20. It's it's the, the, 20. the NFL okay. is now the 25. Uh, high school uh, and college are still at the 20. I actually looked that up. Ah, well, good. Thank you. Yeah, I figured you know, i got to be you know, the color analyst. i got to know what I'm talking about. All right, we have Gonzo Hidalgo spread wide to the left. Isaac Roney spread wide to the right. Buck pounds. Lano had too many Under. men on the field at first. Now they started it up. Got three in the backfield. That's going to be Co Sam Hurley goes into motion. He's going to take the pitch. The He's going to get the 20. There it is. 25, 30. Flag down. Still driving his feet. That's yeah, That was number seven. Mason Brooks. We'll see what the flag the play. is. I'm going to say holding. Holding or a block in the back or something. That flag came out quick. And it is a hold on Lago. Yep. 19 seconds remaining in the first quarter. I tell see, you, the, uh, penalties, you got to stop shooting yourself in the foot. You get a great gain of nine yards just to only bring you back. Got to be a little more disciplined. Minor setback. All right, now we got first and twenty. The uh, the Lano band is rocking, right? They are. They're right going with it. Yeah. Find myself tapping my feet. I know. All five Lano cheerleaders are in it. I got you. Thank you. And the uh, and the mascot. That's All right, Buck Pound's going to do a oh, couple he's got of things. Keep it himself and. Boy, I tell you what, who made that tackle? Um, that was number 30 for Lano. That would be Presley Lynch. Presley Lynch. We've caught his name a couple times already. Buck Pounds had some space. Yes, he did. Except for Lynch. Closed that Closed space in a hurry. Very fast. And, and made it, you know, uh, we'll go yeah, a short gain instead of a long gain. And that's the end of the first quarter. La Lano leading 10 Zero over the Lago Vista Vikings. It is the uh, Lago Vista Vikings Sports Network, and we're powered by KMAX Sports. Vibe Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, B Y P E, Texas.com, and also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. Sail & Ski Center is a full-service boating lifestyle store. Whether it's selecting and purchasing a new or used boat, maintaining the boat you already have, or enjoying your boat with friends and family, Sail & Ski is dedicated to delivering the absolute best boat ownership experience for all of our customers. That's why Sail & Ski was voted Boating Industry Magazine's number one boat dealership in North America. Find us at our locations in Austin or in Lakeway or at www.sailandski.com. At Sail & Ski Center, we make selecting, owning, enjoying, and servicing your boat easy. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter, at KMAX Sports. It is the Viking Sports Network coming to you live from Lano, Texas. 
Second quarter just underway. Lano leading 10-0 over the Laga Vista Vikings. Vikings have it. Second and 15. There's going to be a pitch to, uh, it looks like Sam Hurley coming around the nope. corner. Cody Jackson. Cody Jackson pushed out of bounds. Minimal gain on the play. Number 84. Quentin Franklin. Quentin Franklin on the tackle. It's uh, third and long now. So here's the perfect place to do that pooch punt. You got third and 15. They're totally not putting anyone back because they're not expecting it. Kick it deep. Pin them. We'll see what they do. Oh, they're not going to do it. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, Hidalgo spread wide to the right, Isaac Roney to the left, three in the backfield. Cody Jackson goes into motion. Buck Pound's going to... Ooh. Look the pass, oh. and that ball is nearly intercepted. Went high intended Thank God it went off his hands. Isaac Roney. If that didn't go off his hands yeah, and the ball might have been a little wet, he had nobody in front of him. That was going to be six. Yeah, that was an easy walk in for a touchdown. That was uh, Kendall Downey on, on the, the tip. Almost. So, <laughs> Bryce Erickson back to punt for the Vikings. He's standing on his three-yard line. And he Almost blocked. Good nice kick. Nice kick. It's going to be fielded at about the 50-yard line. Switches fields. Oh, he's yep. fast. He is fast. Oh, he's fast. He's going to get to the 40, the 35, and chased out of bounds. That's uh, number 12. Lago Case. territory. Case Kuykendall. Oh, it is raining. Yes. Well, I couldn't see that through the. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't that see now. that through this uh, frosted can, glass. We can't <laughs> see much through the you frosted glass. If you want to call it glass. frosted. I just heard the uh, the Lockhart and Medina Valley game, is bit, there's a lightning delay. So we knew weather was coming. Yeah. So uh, Lano comes Thank out. Thank God for our spotter. Uh, I, I would have never knew it was raining. Thank you, Will Herring. Oh, uh, maybe, oh the, maybe, maybe I would have paid attention to the, the all the umbrellas in the stadium. That might have been a good tip. Cade Fly is going to pitch that to his left. That's number seven. He gets to the 30, the 25, taken down by. That's the main guy, Mason Grant Brooks. Arietta and Sam Hurley on the tackle. Big gain on first down. Brings up second and eight. Boy, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we got a little bit of rain. It's, it's blowing right through, though. It's going to oh. be m not much of anything. Just enough to make it slippery for a bit. Cade Fly looks Oh, left. he's got one deep in the Flips left. To the end zone and incomplete ball intended for number 44. Great, great pass defense by Noah Hernandez. Got his hands up right at the last second. Brooks Keeley was the intended receiver. That's going to bring up a third and three. Ten nothing, Lano leading. Eleven minutes left in the second quarter. We got third down and short. Third down and short. They come out uh, one in the backfield, and that's going to be a handoff up the middle. Nope. Cade Fly is going to keep it himself. He's not going to get enough for the first down. That's Nathan Weekman first there on the tackle. Nice play. I think that's six on a day for him already. He's having an excellent night so far. So will that bring out the kicker? It that, doesn't look like it yeah, right like now, go but this is about go. what it was for them the last time, was not? Yeah. They're going to go for it on fourth and two. Big stop here. Cade Fly has one to his right. He's going to hand that up the middle. He'll have oh, enough for the run. first down. They take it down near the 15-yard line. Little off tackle to the left. Sam Hurley on the stop. Mason Brooks was on the carry. And that'll bring up first and ten. Moves the chains <laughs> for Lano. So yeah, it's going to be at the 16-yard line. They have one in the backfield, one to the right. Cade Fly is going to hand play. that off to Mason Brooks. He's going to get across the ten, the five. Taken down by Sam Hurley. And Josh Hernandez. Josh Hernandez. On the stop. Brings him inside the five. Same formation. They're trying to hurry up. I think they're going to run the same play. Yeah. There and it is. Mason same play. Brooks three in a row. Oh, Ooh, nice good tackle. Play. I think that's Jack Hood. 
Yeah, 52, 50, Jack Hood. Jack Hood. Yeah, that was a touchdown saver right there. Yeah, he, he was down. He just grabbed his ankle. It was a shoestring tackle, by. but it worked. Gain of about one. All right, so we've got <laughs> second So they ran goal. the same play three in a row. I think they might do it again. Say, right, well, they, may, they may hold it this time, and you'll see the quarterback keep it. There yeah, it is. Yep, yeah, quarterback's going to keep it. Cade Fly is going to go into the end zone for a touchdown. And That's what I was talking knew. about. Lull him, lull him, lull him. Yeah, you knew every time they ran that play, they were setting you up. They were setting it up because they were having success with it. And so you have to adjust. Well, once you adjust, well, then we'll, well do now, something else. That's what that's what well, that's called a veer. Basically, it's a quarterback's choice. I'm either going to give it to him if I see it open on the left hand side, or if I see it open up on the right, I'm going to keep it, tuck it, and go. And what they can do off of that is a veer pass. So oh, you do the yeah. fake, you draw back, and you have a quick slant on the right hand side, which would, would most likely be open because they're flooding the the left side. Right, so it's leaving, out, yep. they're leaving the cornerback out on an island by himself. You do a quick slant off the corner. You have no help coming from your linebackers or whatnot. It's just a cornerback has just got to try and make a great play. 9.33 left in the second quarter. Lano jumped out to a 17-0 lead. It is the Viking Sports Network. We're powered by KMAC Sports. You know when you're hanging at Lake Travis and you start craving pizza? Usually you panic and go hungry. Or worse, you make a pit stop at a sad food stand. But with Domino's Hotspots, you can get pizza delivered right to Arrowhead Park. In fact, now you can get Domino's delivered to over 50 outdoor locations around Lago Vista. No address required. When you order, enjoy any two or more medium two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each every day. Two item minimum handmade pan pieces will be extra. Ask for limited time offer prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspot. This is the KMAX Sports Network. It is the Viking Sports Network coming to you live from Lano. Second quarter, 9.33 left. Lano jumps out to a 17-0 lead. But as we've seen, yeah, like play, last week's uh, game, game, you play it till the end. Vikings or the uh, Yellow Jackets are going uh, to kick off. We have Fisher Topo. and All right, so this is where they're going to kick it probably to the right side again. So oh, take it upfield. Right Don't go back middle. to the middle. Oh, and he drops it. And that's going. That was uh, number 24, Noah Hernandez on the return. Got a couple. But again, you see the difference. Yep. Don't go back to the protection. If it's kicking it to the side or outside that hash mark, just take it upfield to get as much as you possibly can. You had, uh, that's Quentin, isn't it? I said his name a couple times. Quentin Franklin, number 84 on the stop. Vikings take over at the 30-yard line. Noah Hernandez uh, taking uh, some snaps. Yeah. The, uh, that's good. He's... The coaches were very high on him and just very very excited to see because he, he's come up to the varsity level. He's only a he's sophomore. He's only a sophomore, right? And he's come up to the, to the varsity level and said, hey, I, I can play here. Well, we, you know, in, in this year's team, we have, what, eight seniors? So those young guys got to step up. Mm -hmm. All right, three in the backfield, one spread wide to the right for quarterback. Buck pounds, handoff up the middle. Lane Powers Oof. who Oof. runs through for a first down. Past the 40. No flags on the play. That'll move the chains. You had uh, Ryan Warner, a linebacker, on the stop, or really merely just hanging on, hoping to stop him. Well, and that was Lane Powers ran through two, two of tackles, them. and then oh, one yeah. just held down, dragged for about five yards. He's, he's a said, beast. Okay. Uh, That's a good little spark to the offense, and I think Lane Powers just came out, and Johnny Hernandez went in the backfield. Apparently they did not. Little thunder and lightning, maybe. There. What is that? I've never seen. I didn't. So we had the ref raising the roof last week, and this guy's flying. I don't know what I don't know what call that is. Huh. But the, the it right. looks like we got a ten yard uh five yard penalty on that, right? Yeah, because we we. Well, they're moving the they're moving. It's all still a first shit. down. That, uh, okay, so I, I don't get it. I'm confused. Okay, so they got the first down. All and right, they so pushed it's them back five, but kept the first kept down. The first down. So it's first and ten. Ball at the thirty-seven. All sides. And there's a flag. And That'll full start on Lago. Lago yep. said, "Hey, we spoke too soon." Lago said, "No, no, no. Hey, we got penalty. It's supposed to be first and fifteen, not first and ten. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of it ourselves." <laughs> uh, all right, so all right, so Coach Phillips is not going to be happy with the first half of play with the amount of penalties that have been thrown so far. 
and the penalties will shoot you in the foot every time. You get a great gain, and it, it kind of ruins momentum. And now you have a limited number of plays that you want to run now at first and 15. Right, because the, the whole premise of the offense is that we're going to grind it out. We're going to get four. Right. We're going to get five. Buck Pound's going to hand that up the and middle. And another flag. That came in from the umpire, it looks like. And it, that might be offsides on defense. Oh, chop block. You were trying to. I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping. There was a little early movement way up at the nose guard, but they missed that, but they got the chop block. So that's going to be. Uh, Coach Baugh on the sideline, less than please. Yeah, I would be as well. So now it brings up first and that's a long forever. Way. They are at the that might be first and 30. They're at the 17 yard line. First down marker is they've got to get to the 47. Yeah, that's first and 30. That's pretty good math right there, that huh? Nice. Well Either done. that or it's just my eyes are just keen like eagles. All right, Cody Jackson goes into motion, and Lane Powers going to take it himself. No flags on the play, I believe, taken down at the 23-yard line. That's 35 on the stop. Mason Baker. See, now our offense is just not conducive to a first and 30. Well, let's be honest. Is there any offense conducive to a first and 30? A spread offense, maybe if, you know. Maybe. You, you have, you yeah, have okay, the right so receivers, but a ground and pound is not the ideal situation of first and 30. That's going to be Lane Powers up the middle, taken down near the 30, getting inching closer back to the original line of scrimmage. Ryan Warner on the initial hit. A slew of a swarm, swarm. of other Lano jackets. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> See I don't know. I don't know if I like the whole jackets because what kind of jackets could you be? Would you be the leather jackets? jackets? Uh, you don't know. What kind of jackets could you possibly be? Straight jackets, well, right? Know, the, the That's what I feel like in the booth sometimes, like I'm in a straight jacket. <laughs> the interesting thing is they're the yellow jackets. But they're orange they're and black. Orange, yeah. All right. Buck Pound's going to fake the handoff roll to his right. He's got time. Goes back across. Oh, and slips. Slips. That was number 21. Noah Vasquez. He was had he coverage on by Logan Duggar. He may have had, if he had, been, if he had been able to catch that in stride, he may, be, may have been able to make a turn. See, now that's, that's a tough throw to make. You're asking your quarterback to roll 10 yards out to his right and come back and throw it completely across the other side of the field. So it's a, it's a very tough throw. I mean, he that's a tough throw for a, an NFL ball player to make, let alone a high school kid. And credit the buck. He made a good throw. Yeah, it was a good throw. High punt by Bryce Erickson. It's going to land at the 40. Rolling roll, the wrong way. Rolling the wrong way. That's going to be put down by Fisher Topo at the Lago 42-yard line. 702 left in the first half. Lano 17, Lago 0. And the uh, the Viking offense hasn't been able to kick it, you know, get into that groove since the first drive. First drive they were rolling, they're rolling. They had some big plays and then uh, you know, turnover turnover hurt them. Yeah. So they just uh, you They know, just need to switch the momentum back and bring it back into their favor. Make maybe a big play, maybe get a turnover here. Yep. Force a takeaway. Hey, hit us up on Twitter, at LV Viking Sports, at LV Viking Sports. Say hello. Let us know where you're listening from. As Cade Fly is going to reverse the hand off one way, K, uh, Jack Hood forced him back inside. Arietta loses his helmet at the same time of making the shoestring tackle. Jack Hood came up the field to hold that contain. Maybe came a little bit too far. He could have had him in the backfield, but kept him inside for Arietta to come in and make the, uh, the cleanup. Second down and five now for the Yellow Jackets. Quarter about half over. Moving fast. It is. It is. Not so a lot of stoppage. Cade Fly, he's got three wide receivers to his right side, two to his left side. Now he's going to put his uh, running back in motion. He's got one behind him, and 
He's going to fake it to the running back, keep it himself, get across the 50, almost to the 45. That'll move the chains for a first down. Ethan Harris and Josh Hernandez. Josh Hernandez on the stop. Number 50, Ernesto Hernandez, forced the quarterback to the inside. If he didn't do that, he had a wide sideline to run on. Got two spread wide to the right. Man in motion going from left to right. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. Big no hit by Jack Hood. Jack Hood and... Jack Hood said absolutely not. And Josh yeah, Hernandez Josh jumped Hernandez, in on that yeah. as well. But the initial hit by Jack Hood and started driving him back. We'll Jack go. Hood was like a train. Yeah. They'll give him a minimal gain on that one. But, uh, they're giving him one. So it'll be second and nine. Lano has a quick hurry up offense going. Well, that's usually what it is with the uh, with the spread offenses. Yeah. You call out they a few wanna, numbers. They want to get their plays going. Two spread wide to the right, one in the backfield, one in the H-back spot, one to the left, and there's going to be a fake. Down okay, the right fly left. under pressure. Nice catch by number 15 along the sideline. He's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 20. That was Noah Hernandez knocking him out of bounds, but it was a it it was a, it was a nice catch by Thomas Adams. And, you know, you teach people, catch with your hands, catch with your hands. He did that very well. Oh, he well. sure did. Three spread wide to the right, one to the left, and Cade Fly. The quarterback has one in the backfield. And he's going to fake, fake the pitch. The pitch Ooh, he had him open, too. Middle. Oh, boy. that's Look at that. Three. Look at the running back around the right side. There was not a soul around him on the, from Lago Vista. If he, he was going to go to him and then decided to come down the middle of the field. If he threw that to number three, he was gone. Yeah. Josh Hernandez forcing the throw. He shot in the backfield is what I heard. Sh I heard a shot in the backfield as well. Yeah, it, 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 fortunate for the Vikings, he threw into quadruple coverage. Yeah. All right, Cade Fly is organizing his running backs. He's grabbing people and saying, go here, go here. Three spread wide to the right. That's going to be a off. handoff to number 12. He's got to get he is so room. fast. He's 10 to 15. Or the 10 to 5. Case Kuykendall, he is, he's is he got blazing speed. Yeah, he does. Had Sam Hurley on the stop. Yeah, yeah that's, that's funny because Cade Fly kept moving him, said, no, remember, you're here. Point. I'm going to come up, then come over here. I'll hand you the ball. Just don't stand so close to me. <laughs> So Case Kuykendall checks out, and number two, Kendall Downey, checks in. Downey's in the H-back position. One wide receiver spread wide to the left. Man goes into motion from right to left, and that's going to be a handoff to the running back, and he is going to spin his way into Tisdale. the end zone. Tinsdale for the touchdown for Lano. So Lano almost scoring at will at this point. Just like Lago did last week. That's right. And we all know how that turned out. Yeah, Lago. A couple won. of adjustments at <laughs> halftime. We come back and do something different. What number you got on that kicker there, Mr. Herring? 21? Oh, I could, uh, I could definitely tell you. Just by the name, Diego Miguel. And there's the kick. He's got a leg. And it's good. Mason Hines almost got his hands on it. So we got four minutes, 36 seconds remaining in the first half. Lano 24, Lago Vista 0. It is the Viking Sports Network, and we are powered by KMAC Sports. KMAC Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine Inner Space Caverns, if it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it. Ow. Oh, that hurt. Bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. Socialize with us. You don't have what they call the social skill. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your teams to you. 
It is the Viking Sports Network, powered by KMAX Sports. All right, let's get a little return going here. Who do we got back deep? Fisher Topo and uh, Noah Hernandez? Is that who I see, 18 and 24, or is that Sam Hurley deep now? Maybe the guy with binoculars can answer yeah. that question. Fisher Topo, yes, Fisher -Topo, Topo drops the, the ball. 20, and he's going to get out near the 25. That's uh, Christian Kirby on the stop. Yep, it's uh, a little bit of light mist of rain again. This is what's making our Lago players handle the ball a little suspect. You know, I know. Uh, Maybe they're putting stick them on their uh, ball, Lano, because I haven't seen one of them drop it yet. They, uh, I remember reading about Peyton Manning. Every practice, he would soak footballs. And then the last half of practice, he would practice with a wet ball. Really? Uh, I did yeah. not hear that. Yeah. That's actually pretty genius. Well, yeah. that's why he's that's one of the best of all time. I mean, he's fine. He did beat the Bears in the Super Bowl. Uh, I'll never forgive very him. Very sore spot. One spread wide to the right for Lago. That's Isaac Roney. Timeout on the field taken by Lano. And that's not a timeout you want to be taking up. 24 nothing out of the kickoff. I'm just curious, what did they see? What did, you know, the, the cause for that timeout? Why, why, ha what happened? He was happened? exhausted. But it's a great timeout for Nine Design Custom Builders. <laughs> yes, it is. That can build anything your heart desires. Contact them, 516-817-9999. Keep a lookout in Lago Vista for new builds coming from Nine Design Custom Builders. Build your dreams. 4.30 left in the second quarter. Lano leading 24-0. Lano just took a timeout coming out of the uh, coming out of the kickoff. So Lago will take over. They've got the ball at the 23-yard line. And hey, you know what? It's fine. Let's just make a play. Make a play. L listen, again, this is still preseason for right. Lago Vista. So... Get your kinks out now. Make you you know work on what you need to work on now, and then take it you know with a step forward, moving into the regular season. Buck Pounds go, or no, I'm sorry, Lane Powers takes that out to about the 28 yard line. And had number 35 Mason Baker on the tackle. Mason Baker is a sophomore. He's playing well. Yeah, he is running back linebacker. We got second, and this is this is exactly where you want to be. We want to be second and four. Let's grind it out. Let's go as we go under four minutes left in the half. And Buck Pounds under center. That's gonna be Sam Hurley nope, goes into motion, the ball. and I don't went through his hands a bit. Buck Pounds gonna keep it himself. Yeah, he Buck Pounds contained it himself. Yep, Buck Pounds bobbled it a bit before it, and before he could do anything, he had three Lano defenders on him. So it brings up third and four. No gain, no loss on the play. Three and a half minutes left in the half. Lago comes out. Isaac Roney goes wide to the left. Motion man and is Cody Jackson. A yep. little bit of lightning off in the distance. I didn't see that. Let's hope not. Sam Hurley takes the sweep. Oh, that's a good the play right side. there. He gets across the Get 30, field. the 35, the 40. First and 10 for the Vikings. No flags on the play. There's a good spark. Number 30, Presley Lynch on the stop. A lot of room out there. Yeah, and that was that was a nice, quick, decisive move by Hurley to get in the open field and go as we come under three minutes left in the first half. Two minutes and 50 seconds remain. This Vikings is what you want. Come out. Yep. You want you want you want points on the board right before half. And that's gonna be a handoff to Lane Powers. Lane Powers gets to the 45 yard line. That brings up second and seven. What I've kn who was at 84? Quentin Franklin on the stop again. Been calling his name a bunch of times. One thing I've noticed with Lane Powers, he's a bull, and he's a very effective bull. However, he's got his head instantly down. Pick up your eyes a touch. Maybe not look to crush people every time. Make a quick move, and you're going to go a little bit further because he's got he needs a little bit more vision when he's running. 
Sam Hurley is going to take it around the left side. He's got some pressure. Gets around the edge. 45 Good run. 50. Gets That'll across. get the chains. Gets across uh, the 50, taken down the 45, moves the chains. First down, no flags on the play. Under two minutes left. Linebacker Ryan Warner on the stop. All right, so we got Atlanta territory. Keep it rolling. I think they hear us on the other room. We're calling out numbers, and they're just they're the way they're behind us. They're waiting yeah. on us to call it. And hey, don't forget the Domino's halftime show is coming up. As Buck Pound sexes to Sam, Hurley goes into motion. Sam's going to throw. He's got a man coming behind, and oh the no. pass is complete. Did he catch it? Pass is caught by Cody Jackson, Cody Jackson at the 33-yard, 34-yard A little bit line. of trickery. Yep. All but right. I tell you what, Sam Hurley, he rolled that to the left, and then I thought he was going to get clobbered. Yes. One fifteen left in the first half. Lago comes to the line. Cody Jackson goes into motion. Lane Powers across the 30. Inside. Taken down the 28-yard line. That's that's a typical Chris Berman uh, run right there. Rumbling, rumbling and stumbling. Rumbling and stumbling. That's exactly. That was the picturesque rumbling and stumbling. One oh Time out of Lago. Left in the first half. Lago driving. They're at the 28-yard line. Trailing 24-0. And don't forget, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know where you're listening from. Colby Bando saying hello. Colby listen, Bando. Listening from the house. Stay Is that right. Kyle's son? I believe a brother. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Good to have support all around. The rain has increased as I look through it. It almost looks like snow. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, it's not snow. It's definitely not <laughs> snow, but it looks the way it's falling. Me that I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, the being I, what do you mean? I'm from Texas. Uh, you can hear it in my accent. Have you heard yourself talk? <laughs> uh, and don't forget Domino's Pizza halftime show is coming up. Introducing Domino's Hot Spots. Get pizza delivered to outdoor locations like parks, beaches, and more. Not at home, not a problem. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hot Spots. Buck Oop. Pounds, going to keep it himself. And no gain on the play. Third down and five. Had a lot of room on the outside. Cut it back in a little bit early, but. There's been a timeout taken. Yeah, that's what it seems to be. There's going to be a. Will crazy. Herring has the radar up for us. So. Looks like that was an injury timeout. The uh, injured player for Lano's off the field. He walked off under his own power. He's okay. So 48 seconds remaining. Third down and four as the referees blow the whistle. Let's confer again. All right, we'll talk about it. Uh, there's been a lot of that this year. Last year, what, it didn't seem like we had a lot of conferences with these referees. This year has been a lot. He's raising a roof. We've got to find out what raising a roof means. I'm, I'm really curious. We'll roll the clock. Buck Pound's going to drop back the pass. Oop, he's he's got pressure. pressure. He's Ooh, there's a hold. Outside. Big time hold. Cut. Yeah, that. Uh, uh, Buck Pound's going to take it inside the 20, but that's going to come back. And that's a, uh, I tell you, the, the pressure from Lano was intense. They, uh, they had two or three guys in the backfield, and uh, I don't know. Didn't which, have much to do which, but hold. You had yeah. to. Someone was just holding on, trying to protect Buck the best that he could. Yeah. Who was on that tackle? Was that 43 on that tackle? Because Buck Pounds is pretty fast. And if that was 43, no, there's no 43 on the field. Whoever that might have been, he caught him in a jiffy. It definitely okay, wasn't number 12. I know that. Third and 14 now. Lago has it at the 37-yard line. 38-yard line. Buck Pounds drops the pass. Nice protection. Now it breaks down a little bit, and he is going to be wrapped up from behind. That was the same guy. That, that's who it was. That was 18. 18 Caleb Dodson. Super fast speed. Not much Buck could have did on that one. Tried to stiff arm. He was just... He was on him. And, and that'll be the half. I think Lago is content to let the half run out as the left. Wow. Lano called a timeout. Going to make him kick. But I think if you're going to do that, 
Don't wait for two seconds because now all Buck needs to do is just. Now I'm going to heave one. That's if I was Co Coach Phillips, I would heave one to the end zone just for fun. You want to make me kick to you? You think I'm going to kick to you? I'm going to throw one up at the end zone. See what happens. I would just take snap, run backwards five steps, just take a knee. Different different schools of thought. You and my you and me here. Well, I mean I understand that. I'm I'm heaving it to the end zone. But Mr. Herring agrees with me. You know what? You you want to disrespect me like that, I'm going to take a shot at the end zone and hope it lands in my player's hands. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't understand why would you not, why would you let the clock run down to two? <sighs> if, if, if you want another play, I respect that. That's fine. We're going to keep playing. We're all, you know, we're trying to win. You're that's trying right. to win, so that's fine. But the fact that you bring it down to two seconds, well, guess what? The, the Vikings can do something here and not even make it a play. That's right. So Shock the world and throw it up on homecoming. That's taking momentum with you. And yep, and that's what he's going to do. Quick pass. That's going to be caught. Hook and ladder. Flicker to Cody Jackson. Oh, that was a good play. Good coach call. Down. I like it. Very good. Hook and ladder is a great play. I love that play. Well done. Well done. And you know what? Maybe that's a little momentum and a little anger, a little spark going in. I like it. Time. So I like right. it. Come on, guys. Let's play. It's only 20. It's 24 nothing. That's right. Preseason. Let's try it. Let's have let's fun. Go. That's right. It is the Domino's halftime show coming up. We've got some... Interviews coming up. We'll have an uh, interview from Coach Hill. I, I, this week was a crazy week. We weren't able to connect with Coach Hanson or Coach Smith. Oh, man. So I was able to connect with Coach Hill and Coach Karg. So we are going to talk volleyball. We are going to talk cross country. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll dive into our district play a little bit here as well. It's going to be tight in the booth tonight. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it is the Viking Sports Network. We'll be right back. We're going to hear from Coach Hill in just a matter of moments. It is the Viking Sports Network, powered by Vipe Media and KMAC Sports. Do you love the game of football, wish you could be part of the action? Then become a football official. The Austin Football Officials Association is actively seeking new members to officiate games all across Central Texas. The Austin Football Chapter of TASO, the Texas Association of Sports Officials, provides a two-year training program for new members. Taught by a crew of veteran officials, these training classes meet each Monday night from July through November and include classroom and on-field instruction. You don't need to be an expert player or a coach to become a great official and have a memorable officiating career. As our officials will tell you, working around student athletes at all levels of football is gratifying. Plus, you'll develop lifelong friendships with other officials who share your passion for the game. Officiating football is a great way to get into and stay in shape, be a positive role model for student athletes, retain your competitive edge, and earn additional income. Visit the Austin Football Officials Association online at afoa.ws for more information. That's afoa.ws. You know when you're hanging at Lake Travis and you start craving pizza? Usually you panic and go hungry. Or worse, you make a pit stop at a sad food stand. But with Domino's Hotspots, you can get pizza delivered right to Arrowhead Park. In fact, now you can get Domino's delivered to over 50 outdoor locations around Lago Vista. No address required. When you order, enjoy any two or more medium two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each every day. Two item minimum, handmade pan pieces will be extra. As for limited time offer prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspot. All right, it's a halftime show sponsored by <coughs> Domino's Pizza. It's time to talk a little volleyball now. I'm going to be honest. We, uh, we miss Coach Hanson, and so it's, uh, it's Coach Hill and I. Uh, so I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, yeah, it's Coach Hill, do you, do you want to give anybody a shout-out? Um, uh, sure, all of our alums and Coach Hanson, who hopefully will be listening on Friday, <laughs> on our way to Lano, hopefully after beating Johnson City tomorrow afternoon. So, um, well, hello, Coach Hanson. Sorry, I, and I, I know I, I do feel bad because I think the interview is probably her favorite part of the week. <laughs> um, she always tells me how much she can't wait. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, well, we've had a we we had a rough, uh, not a rough stretch, but a, a, a difficult stretch for volleyball coming up. Um, let's talk about Blanco. So they play. We played in Blanco Tuesday night. Lost in four. Okay. Played, had opportunities, 
to win the first set. Uh, we were down, I think, as many as nine or ten points in the first set. Came all the way back with just, I mean, great heart, guts, you name it. The kids showed it. Came all the way back, had an opportunity to win. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get it done. You know, second set, they go out and they get the win, the second set. And then the third set was a little bit like the first. We had our chances. We just weren't able to, just weren't able to make it happen. But, you know, in the fourth set, they kind of got a little separation and we just, we were fighting. They fought till the end. We just couldn't, couldn't overcome. They were playing, they played incredible defense, you know, and they just created, created more scoring opportunities than we did. And, and, uh. We're able to, you know, you know, able to finish the game. So, um, so what do you learn from a game like this? What do you take away? I think the positive is you can play with really good teams. You're a really good team. Is I think is a positive. Like girls, when you play to the level that you can play, you can play with anybody and beat anybody. So that's the positive. The negatives are, hey, you know, let's go back, keep working hard, you know. But you know, hey, we've got to serve a little bit better, more consistent. You know, missed probably too many serves. And, you know, and our ball control beat can be a little bit better. You know, try to take the game to the other team. Don't let them control the, the, the tempo of the game as much. You know, I think those are what you kind of take away from it, you know, when you play good teams like that. So but I think, I think we, we can take the fa- out of the fact that, you know, we walked out of that gym, heads held high, that, you know, we played hard. We just weren't able to get it done. Right. Well, and, you know, when you when you face a team like that, and, and you see this a lot before, um, you know, any sort of big game. You're nervous, you're nervous, yeah. you're nervous, and then the game starts, and you're still just playing the game that, that still you ball. still play yeah. hard. Also, you just gotta you gotta play. So that's you know that, that's a that's a great learning experience. And I know you and I have talked about it before, but if you're gonna compete in anything, you're going to lose. Yep. And that's just you know. And in the district that we're in, we knew. I mean, we know like. Friday night we had we had a great match against Gateway, beat them. We know going to Blanco it's going to be tough. We played hard. We had our chances. It's kind of fr- you know you're frustrated with God. We if we could have they could have would have should have you know, but you can't dwell on it because yeah. man we got a monster tomorrow, and or tonight in Johnson City, so we got to be ready to go for that too. Um, and you got to bring the same effort, the same intensity, the same focus, and you know, and fight like a. You know, we always talk about fight like a dog for every point. Mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. Um, well, that is uh, that's awesome. And I heard uh, that the uh, and I, you may not know this, but I guess the cross country team is going to come to the game uh, on their way down to Corpus because they're going to compete in Corpus. That's right. Um, so that's on the itinerary to go to the volleyball game in Johnson City. Well, we need them to be loud. It was, <laughs> it's, you know, we had a great crowd at our place on Friday. Um, we had the, the crowd at Blanco. It was a big match. Mm-hmm. So it was a good crowd. Lots of, you know, you, the intensity, you, you can feel it in the air. And we know Johnson City is going to be the same way. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's great to hear. And we just, you know, that's great for the support. Um, okay, so this is this is a pretty brutal week with uh, Johnson City and Blank, uh, Blanco and Johnson City, uh, and then what's coming up after that? We've got Maynard New Tech and Gerald to round out the first half of district next week, and then we start all over mm-hmm. um, the following week with Florence and in Gateway and get the whole thing going as we start making the playoff push. Right. So. Right. Well, that is spectacular. Well, I know Coach Hanson is a. Uh, Eagerly waiting for you because you got work to do over yeah. at the uh, high school. <laughs> so. Yeah, go get to work. Go get to practice. So, um, all right. Well, thank you for stopping by. It's no the halftime show sponsored by Domino's Pizza. We'll talk a little cross country coming up next. You know when you're hanging at Lake Travis and you start craving pizza? Usually you panic and go hungry. Or worse, you make a pit stop at a sad food stand. But with Domino's Hotspots, you can get pizza delivered right to Arrowhead Park. In fact, now you can get Domino's delivered to over 50 outdoor locations around Lago Vista. No address required. When you order, enjoy any two or more medium two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each every day. Two item minimum handmade pan pieces will be extra. As for limited time offer prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspot. It is the Viking Sports Network. We're powered by KMAX Sports. Sit here listening to the Lago Vista Band. 
Bobby Jurace and I have a uh, just you know the halftime. It's a it's a nice time to just chill out and relax for a little say uh, a couple minutes as the teams kind of adjust. A lot of us are trailing 24-0 at halftime against Lano, and and uh, you know you never feel good about trailing 24-0. Definitely not. But Lago's in the game. They've shown that they can move the ball. They've shown that they can that they they can that they can compete. Which is good. Now all you got to do is just just fix the little things. Um, you know, a, a big turnover on a on a pitch hurt the Vikings a lot as the uh, as the Vikings were driving. Penalties have hurt them. So it, it, you know, as as if you're Coach Phillips, you say, guys, come on, we're right here. Let's keep it. You know, stay positive and keep fighting. And that's right. Come yeah. on. Uh, you know, what? a couple of big plays. You're right back in the game. A couple of adjustments that the coaches will. We'll do at halftime is going to probably change the way this game is played now. It's very hard to to adjust on the fly while you're on the field, unless you have you know a Peyton Manning or someone able to see these things. And again, you're not going to have that at the high school level. <laughs> yeah, there aren't many Peyton. It's Manning very, very, very rare level. that it's actually going to happen. I mean, you'll even see that in 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 the college level too. That you know the young guys and you know they have to. You know, it, it's something you learn. You know, it's like when you're in the NFL, it's, it's you know, just like high school. I mean, you're doing film work, but it's that's their job <laughs> right. to sit there and line up and be like, okay, I got too deep here. I got this. It's like these quarterbacks' minds are going and going and going. So it's very hard for a kid to do that on his field now. So you have to rely on the coaches to call the plays and call the right plays um, in the, any given situation. But you come in with a game plan, and if the game plan doesn't work, at halftime you go in, you readjust, to what they're doing, and then you just make it a different ball game. Exactly. Um, let's talk a little, uh, look at our district real quick. We looked at it a little bit in the pregame show. Um, so if you look at our schedule coming up, um, boy, and I, I, I wish I had two windows open here. So we've got um, – right, here, we, here we go. We've okay. got the start <laughs> of the season, so, technical season. That's right. So – the, uh, the next game that we've got will start against uh, – next week we'll be home against Gerald. Um, you know, I, I think our our district has a, a couple of different uh, – a couple of different levels. We'll just say that. Agreed. Um, and the, Gerald is a game that we can – you know, we can feel very good about competing against and, and – Going for it, you know they're they're ranked seven thousand eight hundred and eighty first in the nation. Yeah, a little bit better than us right now at eight thousand two hundred and sixty three in the how, nation. How they've how, already played four games though. How how do they rank? <sighs> I think you could you can't even you rank can't the, do that. I mean, you so couldn't even rate, rank the state of Texas to tell you the honest God truth because you're you're not doing interleague play, so to speak. Uh, I know. So so it's all. I mean, don't even pay attention to that. However, you can look at records. Yep. So you got. Gerald is two and two overall so far. How did they play four games already? I had no idea. Um, and unless they played last night, is that possible? That's possible. So sure enough, they're two and two, pretty even balance right now. Um, they're a little more powerful on their offense than we are. We're actually at forty-four points for, uh, with seventy-six against so far this uh, one and two. They're at one thirty-five points for one hundred eight against. So and it's pretty even. Uh, I'd, I'd say it's a touch even. You know. It, it all depends on how they're going to play that night. You know, you're going to see who's going to come out hungry, and you've got to come out hungry every single game. Yep, and it, and it really depends. You know, looking at the offense, it, it depends who you've played. You know, because we put 49 points against Comfort. Right. Well, and then we did, we put up six against Lampasas. So, right, so and so far you. none tonight. Yeah. I, I feel some coming. They're coming. You know, because of the adjustments that these fine coaches of Lagavist are going to put together. Uh, it's a game of two halves, like we said, right? That's right. So that's going to be Gerald. Gerald's 2-2. Two and two. Uh, And then we'll go to Little River Academy. Little River Academy is... Uh, Where's that? That is... If you go north on 35... Okay. Um, it's before Waco. Uh, and that's, you know, that's that. So, so it's far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty far. Um, go River, back to that head-to-head. -head. Head. Little River Academy has lost to Rogers. They lost them 35-21. Yep. They lost to Salado 35-7. They lost to Hempstead 25-17. Uh, Hempstead. Right? Hempstead's in Long Island as well. Did you know that? Oh, well, they went to Long Island to play. Yeah, they maybe. Um, 
then uh, right now they're playing Florence tonight. So I think that'll be another good test to kind of see where they are. The wild card of our district is Maynard New Tech. Okay. Um, because they are a brand new, well, they're not a brand new school, but they are a brand new athletic school. Um, and so, you know, we don't, uh, a lot of people are just kind of wondering, like, huh, I wonder how good they're going to be. I wonder how they're going to be. Yeah. So that is well, the let's fourth take a look. game of our district. Um, well, Maynard New Tech is also 1-2 and two so far, and we got the edge on them. They're ranked 11,985th. <laughs> yeah, uh, in take that, yeah. Maynard New Tech. <laughs> We're broken in the ten. We've at least broken ten thousand. We broke nine thousand. We broke nine thousand. We're almost at the eight thousand mark. So uh, yeah, we're gonna see how that works out. Because again, like you said, nobody knows. Right. You know, they, the the Cameron, Yo, and the Rockdale. What know, about Troy? Troy's another wild card. Okay. Um, and so that's you know we're, we're not a not a thousand percent sure of where they are. They're two and one this year. But again, who have they? You know. Oh wow, they, they got a two thousand eight hundred thirty four rank. Wow. So really good. they must be pretty good. Uh, 353rd in Texas. Uh, Lago Vista is 819 in Texas. So I would really like to. We're looking at the maps, uh, maxpreps.com, and I would really like to ask him where do these numbers come from? Where like, do they come from? I mean, because, you know, think about it. Where do, where do, you know, they're doing these rankings, right? And uh, they are technically 2 and 1. However, their points for are 78, and their points again are 83. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how that's. I, I don't know idea. how you have a great rank like that with with uh, an upside down points for and points against. Well, hey, it's the Domino's Pizza halftime show. Don't forget, if you need anything, talk to Ike and the guys at Domino's here in Lago. Um, they will do anything, and they have Domino's hot spots now. So if you're at the park, you're at the pool, whatever, you can call Domino's, get it delivered with no address required. We're going to take a quick break. Actually, we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll take a quick break, and then we're going to talk to Coach Karg for the Domino's Pizza Halftime Show. Uh, we want to talk about the middle school meet, and then we got to talk about the, uh, they have a big regional preview meet coming up this weekend. It is the Viking Sports Network, and we're powered by KMAC Sports. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the QMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmacsports.com or merle at kmacsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team schemes too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAC Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Look at like. I know, you know, it's never said his names or anything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the so halftime show is sponsored by Domino's Pizza. Now, today's a little bit different, and um, we're going to sit with only Coach Card. Honestly, she's my favorite. Yeah. So, so that's that's it. No, so we. Uh, Not missing Smith at all. <laughs> this uh, the, just and, kidding, and I don't Coach know Smith. If, <laughs> just kidding, Coach Smith. I, mean, I was gonna say I don't know what people understand, um, the the amount of work that teachers have to go through. So, Coach <laughs> Coach Carter, I just want to go through your week real okay. quick. And my lack of voice, if I sound strange. Yeah. Yes. So Monday you're in Jackson City. For volleyball, for yes. Volleyball. Yes, sir. Um, Tuesday was a off. You know. Tuesday I was off. Wednesday we went to Lomita. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. So, so we're here to talk about. Wednesday, Lomita. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, Wednesday, Lomita. Thursday, Lano. Thursday, travel with the cheerleaders to Lano to watch my son play football and all the other football players. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, then, and then tonight you'll be in Corpus. Yes. Yes. But first we're going to go to Johnson City oh, right. and watch the Varsity Volleyball Girls, and then we're going to drive to Corpus. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know if I, I don't know if there are many people as crazy say, as me. Like, yeah, I, this is what I did, and, and I also was here at like 6:30 in the morning and, and taught all day, and then did all this too, and then did an awesome job in the classroom because. <laughs> You know, uh, the, the things you're doing See, in the classroom are pretty spectacular as well. So, well, thank you. Uh, give you a little shout-out. Nice job. Um, 
So let's talk about cross country. Let's okay. go back because uh, we have not spoken since the Lago Vista meet. Oh, which, I didn't bring the Lago Vista meet information. We killed it there. That was awesome. <laughs> so we'll talk about the uh, Lago Vista meet. Um, first of all, how was it? Oh, it was amazing. The the atmosphere. I've never been around another cross country meet as neat and cool as that one. The music, oh, the person who emceed was fantastic. Okay. He was, he was, he was, he was. But the music, and there's Kona Ice and 524, I think, Coach Smith said, runners. And That's so it was, awesome. It was really neat. Um, so, and, you know, it was a home meet, but we got a tough course. So, we had a very tough course. Uh, so how did we do? We did well. Our seventh grade girls finished second. They uh, behind behind first by four points. So that, that one kind of stung, but they did awesome. Um, Allie Ray won it again. Mm -hmm. a, again, was the fastest girl two-mile time, so she beat even the varsity time. Jada Malone got second. Kendall Carr got 12th. And um, Addison Lockhart, Ava Lux, Lauren Smith, and Gabby Spragley also competed for us. Um, That's awesome. That's they, a good yeah. team. Oh, yes. I'm going to go on with the eighth grade girls. Who won it? Nicely we done. Champions with 28 points. Um, Peyton Stoner got third. Let's see. Well, we got a lot of girls in. Uh, Karina Allwell fifth. Savannah Lance tenth. Julia Ball right behind her eleventh, and Shelby Yuri behind her in twelfth. Also competing was Maya Ramsey. Oh, she got fifteenth. That girl ran her heart out. That's so I've awesome. never seen anybody <laughs> run so hard. Um, Riley Bing, uh, Caitlin Rank, Jessica Murphy, Shelby Hovey, and Jillian Childs also competed for the eighth grade girls. Um, let's see. Our seventh grade boys finished third. Caden Nichols got third place. Harper Moxley, fifth. Aaron Holt, you might know him. A little bit. Yep, got 12th place. And then uh, also competing, <laughs> Jax Rodriguez, Reagan McLaughlin, Shea Gillimod, Lucas Saldana, and um, Noah Bentley also competed for the seventh grade boys. I love that our course had the seventh grade boys and the eighth grade boys separated. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of our kids got to see some success there. Right. And then our eighth grade boys, so close, finished second. Um, Liam Panter got second in the meet. Tristan Dezo third. Nick Bando behind him in fifth. And also competing, Ethan Helton, Carson Dome, Miguel Vaness, and Rafi Mad... He's going to be at that pace. <laughs> Yes. The whole oh, time. Yes. It's not fast, but it's just consistent, and yep. he just goes, and he just... And he doesn't stop, and he doesn't walk, and yeah, I am, I'm very impressed with him. That's awesome. Um, well, and then you went to... Did we get all of them out here? <laughs> oh, we got everybody from okay. Logo, yes. Okay, yeah. so, um, so that was awesome, <laughs> and the rain held off until the eighth grade. Until the eighth grade boys, yeah, and, and then, then they got soaking wet. It <laughs> was pretty awesome. Fun to watch from the booth. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was pretty hard. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, and then we went to Lomita. It was then a quick turn. Yes, we traveled on Wednesday. We like to give the middle school kids at least a, one meet during the week just to, you know, let them get out of school and kind of travel during the week. But it was hot. Yeah. It was a tough course. There's no shade in Lomita <laughs> at all. There's that one yeah, tree. One tree we all hide under. Uh, we did well. Um, the seventh grade girls finished fourth. Overall, I don't think they were too pleased with their place, but I was pleased with them individually. So, again, Allie Ray, champion. She may have only gotten held back because the gator was so close to her. <laughs> That's Golly. the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the gas. <laughs> Hit the gas. Faster. Not her, but the gator. <laughs> um, Jada Malone and scored, scored 13th on her 13th birthday. No, no, she was 12. That would have been cool. Uh, that would have been but, way cooler. Yes. Should have so, let that one person yeah, pass her. Like, here, come on, it's my birthday, so we're going to even it up. Um, so I just list the other competitors. Kendra Karg, Addison Lockhart, Ava Lauks, and Gabby Spragley also competed for the 7th grade girls. Our 8th grade girls are pretty unstoppable. They're champions again in Lomita. Um, we put top our five fastest runners in the top 15. Nice. 